Hey guys, welcome back to Country Boy Guns on YouTube. Today I'm going to talk about my HK Mark 23. If you guys have seen Tears of the Sun, you've seen this gun in action. This is the uh, pistol that they use in the village uh, to give the uh, local militia or army or whatever they are that are doing all kinds of bad things the lead injection that they so desperate, desperately need. Um, this thing is a beast. It's heavy. Uh, you can look up pictures on the internet of guys holding these up next to Desert Eagles in all the different dimensions, you know, this way and then top and bottom and side, all that stuff, all the different dimensions right next. And there's they're like that much difference between this and a Desert Eagle. It's crazy. Uh, it's a big gun. But it shoots so nice. It has an amazing, amazing single action trigger. And I say single action because the double action is heavy. It's ridiculous. This was really meant to be, not meant to be, it was designed to be a uh, offensive handgun for special operators. But HK designed it like a target gun. Uh, with a beautiful glass-like single-action trigger, a six-inch threaded barrel from the factory, uh, standard three-dot white, uh, white sights. I always want to say night sights, but they're not night sights. Uh, we'll go over some of the more of the features here in a minute. Um, but I mean, you can just you can see in my hand, it's huge. I love this thing. This was technically the first centerfire pistol I ever bought. Um, I say technically. Because I also bought a Beretta 9mm at the same time, which I'll probably do a video on at, so, video on at some point. Uh, but because I bought them at the same time, I like to claim that this was my first centerfire handgun because it's just so ridiculous. Um, the rail up here on the front is an aftermarket part that I bought through hkparts.net so that I could put a standard um, you know, light on it. Uh, the rail that it comes built in with was meant to be used with a specific infrared laser. Um, I can't remember what it was called off the top of my head, but this massive thing that just hung on the front of the gun. Um, I mean, you got to remember when this thing was developed. I'm pretty sure it was in the 90s. So laser and light technology has come a long way since then, thankfully. Uh, so let's talk about the gun a little bit. First of all, like every other video, it is unloaded. Nothing in the chamber. So, uh, features. It's got, it looks to be fairly aggressive, but it's actually really mild texturing on the sides of the grip. Um, the front and back are kind of that pyramid style, a la some of the uh, newer Glocks or the um, FN57 that I just did a video on, literally right before this one. No funneled magwell, but... I've been able to get some pretty good fast mag changes in this gun. That hasn't hindered me at all. Ambi safety here, but it won't engage if the hammer is forward. So in double action mode, you can't use the safety, but you can carry it cocked and locked like a 1911. It has a right-handed, so on the left side only, decocker lever. Uh, does not present on this side has a right-handed only slide release, not present on the other side. That's also your takedown pin, by the way. And it has an ambi paddle mag release, which I actually really like. A lot of people don't. I know a lot of uh, Americans really prefer the push button style. I don't have a problem with the push button. I don't have a problem with the paddle. I like the paddle, actually. Um, especially with a big gun like this, like on the 5.7, let's just say as an example, to release the magazine, I have to rotate the pistol in my hand a little bit to reach that mag release. I can't reach it unless I break my firing grip. I don't have that problem on the Mark 23. I can keep my full firing grip and just bring my index finger down to hit that release. It's kind of nice, uh, but that's just me. It has a huge trigger guard. There's so much room in there. For a glove finger or something. The 5.7 has that too. But uh, Glocks don't. Uh, I keep saying stuff about Glocks. But I still like my Glocks. I carry them every day. 
Uh, it's just everybody knows Glock, so it's easy to compare stuff to a Glock. This one was made in Germany. It's got the, the German markings, you know. Uh, it says it on here somewhere that it was actually made in Germany. It may be on the serial number plate down here. Imported in Columbus, Georgia. Um, but beautiful, beautiful gun. It's basically the HK USP on steroids. Uh, a friend of mine has an HK uh, USP uh, 45 that I've held side by side with this one. And they feel similar as far as the, you know, the contours and stuff. This one's just bigger and beefier and it just feels angrier. Uh, the hammer on this thing, it's a double single action gun. So again, you got to clear. You can fire double action or single action. Here's a reset. That's it. And then a little bit of take up and nothing. It's like a, a Smith and Wesson performance center single action trigger. I mean, it is ridiculously nice. That double action is just so heavy. I mean, you, you can't, you almost can't help unless you practice with this gun a lot, which I don't, it's mostly a safe queen for me. You almost can't help but move it around a little bit as you're pulling that trigger uh, for double action. But again, that single action mode. Oh, it's so nice. I keep wanting to grab up here, and I keep remembering that this doesn't have forward serrations, and it actually has a fairly glossy finish to it. Uh, it's not reflective like crazy or anything. I mean, it's not stainless steel. But uh, you, you can't really get a good purchase up here on the front. You have to come back to the slide serrations in the back, which honestly aren't that great. They're all right, uh, especially given the time period. They'll work for sure, but uh, they're not as aggressive as a lot of the more modern options today are. Uh, I already mentioned the six inch threaded barrel. Now it is threaded for a really weird thread pitch. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head what the standard 45 ACP thread pitch is here in America, but this has a different thread pitch. It was designed to be used with a very specific suppressor from Knight's Armament, uh, but you can get aftermarket barrels threaded in the American thread pitch from HK Parts. Uh, I will say anything you get for this gun is going to be expensive. Uh, this rail, I believe I paid $120 for it. Uh, the barrels I, last time I priced them, they were around $250 on hkparts.net. Uh, you can get full slide assemblies. You can get all kinds of stuff uh, over there for this gun. It's a really good uh, website. It's just you're going to pay money. But if you have this gun, um, it retailed. The MSRP was $2,300 when I bought it, and I got it for $1,850. So not an inexpensive gun by any means, um, but a really, really nice gun. Um, I've won... Two local, very, very small uh, shooting competitions with it. And they were, the pistol portion of the competition was literally two people standing on line with a dueling tree. You know, half the plates on one side, half the plates on the other. You had two magazines, each with six rounds, and that's all you had. So when everybody was out of ammo, or when you knocked all of your targets over first, that was the end. So, um, and this thing... In single action is just a nail driver. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, very top heavy. I mean, if you notice, as I'm putting it on the table, it wants to rock over like that without a magazine in it. Uh, once you put a mag in it, though, a loaded mag, it'll it'll sit flat for you, no problems. Uh, speaking of magazines, it does come with three, and they are 12 round magazines. They are huge. That is so wide. One of these days, I'll do a video on my uh, FN uh, FMP 45 Tactical. It comes with 15 round 45 mags, and they're about the same size. I think they're actually a little bit thinner. It's kind of crazy. But uh, the mags are also expensive. These, I was paying like 60 bucks a magazine for these, and I have a total of eight of them. So um, this is just an expensive gun. It's, it's not... Uh, not your grab it, throw it in the glove box, and leave it there kind of gun. This is a safe queen for me. It's actually one of the very few guns I keep in my gun safe in a nice padded uh, pistol rug type case. Because I don't want anything happening to it. I'm not going to carry this gun. I'm not going to, you know, like, 
defend my life and family with it, most likely. I do keep it loaded just in case, but it's in my gun safe in this thing. It's not going to be the first gun I grab. Uh, it just makes me feel good to have it loaded. Uh, but let's go ahead and do some takedown. Now, for the takedown, I'm going to need a tool. Because this thing is extremely tight. So I'm going to use this round file here just to help me get the pin out. But what you do is you cock the hammer. Again, of course, make sure it's unloaded just like any other gun before you take it down. And I like to use the trigger guard as kind of a helper with my thumb. So you see that little slot right there, right below that antler looking thing that's moving around. That is your slide lock. You're going to want to get that slot right above this pin in your slide le release lever. And once you do that and you hold it there, and yes, I'm going to point the gun at myself right now, and I'm going to look off camera. I'm trying to show you guys this on camera at a really awkward angle, so forgive me. Pop that pin through. Once you've gotten that pin out, the slide will just come off the frame. All right, then from there, move some stuff out of the way so you're not just throwing stuff on stuff. You've got a dual nested captive recoil spring here that's nice steel guide rod. I really like that. Uh, and it's got some weird cuts to it. I've actually tried to put this thing together like this before with this locking up with the barrel because it looks like it's supposed to. It's not. It's actually this surface that locks up with the barrel. So remember that for when you put it back together. To so take the barrel out, you have to take your thread protector off. And all that's there for is to protect the threads, obviously, hence the name, uh, for your suppressor so that those don't get dinged up or scuffed and you can still attach a can. And it also helps protect that crown. This thing has a really nice focus camera, really nice crown to it. There we go. Uh, which helps a lot with accuracy. And then, just like any other Browning style action, pop the barrel out, and then pull it out the back. And that's it. Just a couple big hunks of metal and polymer. Now, talking about the frame, you've got all your internal workings and stuff there. A uh, coiled, uh, or not coiled, um, braided wire spring. Big, beefy ejector right there. Uh, metal sort of almost chassis like um, insert but you can't take that out like you can on a p320 or something your front rails for the slide focus are made out of metal sorry guys my phone is not wanting to cooperate and yes I'm still filming on a phone sorry about that uh, but those are metal your rear rails are polymer actually or I'm sorry no they are metal they're steel I was wrong. I lied to you guys. There we go. See? You can see the wear right there. They are steel. Um, just buttery smooth action. Pulling the slide on this thing is nothing at all. Uh, and then the rest of it is mostly polymer. Uh, metal trigger. Uh, polymer. Mag release there. Metal safety. Metal hammer with a rubber type. Uh, I don't know what you call that. Uh, cocking ear. I don't know. Whatever the hell this part is, that's rubber. And it's actually really comfortable and nice to use. Um, obviously haven't had it break on me or anything. Moving on to the barrel. The barrel's kind of interesting. So, you got a really highly polished feed ramp there. Focus. Anyway, there we go. Nicely polished feed ramp. So, uh, that works out really well. I've never had a malfunction in this gun with factory ammo. So a friend of mine, when I first bought this pistol, uh, was just getting into hand loading. And he loaded up some uh, 45 ACP and we went out to the range. It was in the wintertime. And for whatever reason, uh, he couldn't get his 45 ammo to fire through his striker-fired pistol. I won't say the name of it. Uh, we put it in my hammer-fired 45 and it worked just fine except for I think maybe one or two rounds still didn't want to detonate 
Uh, but with factory ammo, never had any issues. Uh, like I said, I won a couple of competitions with it here locally. And most rounds, it was kind of a tournament style bracket uh, competition with that dueling tree. Most of those rounds of competition, I didn't have to reload. But the few times that I did have to reload, it was it was fast. Not to toot my own horn, but uh, one of my friends who was there and watching made a comment as I was shooting, trying to distract me. He said, damn, man, I have to level up my Call of Duty character like crazy to get reloads that fast. That's freaking John Wick style. So it's the gun. I mean, I practice, I train, sure, but the gun helps a lot with, with winning stuff like that and, and even doing well. Um, but you still have to have skill. Don't think you can just buy the most Gucci gun in the world and go out and win competitions. You have to have skill to be able to do well. Anyway, back to the gun. Sorry, guys. There's this little O-ring here that locks up. Let me hold on the barrel. Locks up in the front of the slide. So right there, it's actually sitting inside the slide here. And what that does is it creates that extra seal, an extra point of contact with the barrel and really enhances accuracy. It's kind of nuts just how much that little O-ring um, helps out with the gun being a tack driver. Uh, the slide, pretty standard affair, milled out up here, not milled out back here for the most part. Um, now down in this trough, this is a pretty deep little trough and you have to make sure, at least I make sure when I clean this gun, that I get all the way in there with a Q-tip. Uh, just because it is so deep and a lot of guns don't have that anymore. Uh, it does have the firing pin block safety thingamajig in there. Big beefy external extractor. Um, again, as I said, hammer fired gun. So reassembly. Take your barrel. Drop it back in, put it in place. You'll feel that O-ring kind of go back into position. That's what you want. Take your guide rod recoil spring assembly with the angled cut towards the barrel. Put it in the hole in the front. Push it forward and compress it. And it locks up. Just like so. Take your slide and frame. Line up the rails, which I'm having a hard time doing on camera. There we go. All the way back. And then I do the same thing. Line up that slot with where that pin's going to go. Grab my pin. Throw it in there. Make sure you don't get an idiot scratch on the slide. So I'm going to like look off camera here for a second. But as you uh, slide it down in there, just make sure that your slide release lever doesn't contact your slide there and scratch it up. Slide it all the way through, pop it into place. Sometimes it helps to put it on a table or something to do that. Just like so, and boom, pistols back together. Take your thread protector, throw it back on, and you're done. So, a uh, video game gun for sure. Uh, really cool gun. Conversation piece. You take this thing to the range, everybody that's into pistols is going to come ask you what the hell it is because it's so massive. And then when they shoot it, they fall in love with it because it's a 45 that recoils like a 9 mil. I mean, it's there's no abruptness to it. It's not punchy. I mean, not that 45 is crazy or anything, but people think about 45s and they think, you know, it's it's a big bullet. Everybody carries nine these days. Everybody shoots nine millimeters. So when they shoot a forty-five, they expect it to be so much more. And with this thing, just because of how big and heavy it is, it's not. Uh, it's a real pleasure to shoot. I think that's all I had to say about this gun. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Post down in the comments below. Let me know what I can do to make these videos better for you guys. Um, Give me some helpful hints, some constructive criticism. Totally open to any of that. Uh, if you guys have any questions or anything else you want me to review, let me know that as well. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, roll Tide, and we'll see you next time.